All right. Thanks, Melanie. And please, if you don't like lasagna, <laughs> please some see me. We have some prayer <laughs> that we need to get in. But man, it is awesome. I know um, it's July. It's hot. I get it. But it's not humid to dry heat. I can tell you, I was standing out there. It was dry. I'm wet, but it was dry. But man, it's so cool. We had a chance to help someone yesterday, and we got furniture from this house that was going under a state sale, and it was kind of neat. I got there to get some furniture, and there was a Bible sitting on the floor. So I was like, man, can I have that? And the lady's like, sure, we're just going to get rid of everything if no one wants it. And it was amazing. It, I read in the back, the lady bought it in 1960, and there was notes in it, and different things she wrote from scripture, but the coolest part, if you know me at all, if you don't, you're going to get to know my favorite verse. My favorite verse is Philippians 121, and there was a bookmark in here from 1959, and it was on Philippians 1. I was like, oh, and that was definitely meant for me to get this Bible, but man, it's so neat to get little things like that, and we really talk about getting in this. It's so important. This is 100% truth for us, and we're going to dive in, and we're going to grow, and we're going to teach you to understand so God can transform you. We're all needing God. We all are going to fall short. We need Jesus, and we have Jesus in the Word. We have Jesus in the flesh at a time and where he came and helped and showed us things. So today, as we get ready to finish up this series, Freedom, Break Every Chain, we're going to be talking about breaking that chain of idolatry and putting things above God. See, Jesus was God in flesh. He was the word who became flesh, so he is truth and he is love. In him, with that connection, we can be love, and we can understand his grace. And because we can understand grace, who, which is Jesus coming when we weren't worthy, that's grace, getting something you did not deserve, we can understand that God also shows mercy, and we should be so thankful for that. I don't know if you ever needed mercy. I have. But he is love and truth. He's not just love. He's love and truth. So truth is his love, not our love. Not our definition of love, not just accepting everyone because it's truth and he guides us to that truth. See, anything else we can think of that comes before God is an idol. See, we got to break that chain of idolatry. We learned a couple of weeks ago or last week that Jesus or Satan's not just bringing this whole heavy chain and throwing it on us and, and getting us caught up. He gives us things. He shares untruths and worldly things. And we start building these links to make these chains. And the more we build, the more we accept, and the more we live with these chains growing, it gets heavier and heavier. And we get more weighted down. We got to break those chains. We, get, we are set free because of Jesus. We have to remember that. See, as we think of the change we could have, could you imagine if you, if you knew yourself before and you really see that aha moment, that transformation when you accepted Christ and you really wanted to take it serious? Not that you just accepted him and said, man, I'm going to be a Christian now. It's going to be so good and dandy. I'm going to live and there's going to be no more problems. no. You start really going, man, Jesus is so important to me. I'm going to do everything I can to live like him. I'm going to study so I can understand how to answer. I can live and love people truly and be there to help. Then that chain can start breaking in our lives. See, idolatry means the worship of a physical object as a God. Immoderate attachment or devotion to something or someone. See, anything that comes before God is an idol. See, the definition in that immoderate means, it said immoderate attachment. It means not sensible or excessive. See, that nonsensical thought or, or that, that 
excessive thought you need to love this so much. I love my football team so much. I love this so much. I love that so much that I put it over God. And see, it's a constant struggle then. Because when truth comes, we automatically are angered by truth, God's truth, instead of what the world is teaching us. See, when we easily mistake grace for acceptance and mercy for allowance, we keep spinning our wheels in the same sins over and over again. See, grace is receiving something you don't deserve. It's not accepting something you do. And mercy is covering you when you make a mistake and you repent. It's not allowing your mistake to continue to go. We have to understand that. See, Jesus lived 33 short years here, and he did it perfectly. See, he did nothing without the Father telling him. He surrendered his deity. He surrendered who he was in flesh to come and show us how to live surrendered from us. See, when we understand he is our full example, that he is the perfect person only, and we can follow him, and we need him, we need the Holy Spirit in us so we can get through the hardest times, because in this short stint here on earth, it's not our home. We should be focused on heaven and seeing and trying and working on being like Christ See, the command, the very first command is you will have no other gods before me. The biggest struggle with idolatry for us is us. See, when we want something to be all right, we'll try to find everything to make it all right. When all we need to do is open up the word And it will tell us everything that is right and wrong and teach us what to do right. But man, mm, that right doesn't fit with what I want to do. So I'm going to keep doing what I want to do because it feels right. See, we have to keep learning that we have to get out of our own way. We have to die to self, pick up our cross daily, and live for Christ. Now, not everyone's going to want to live for Christ. I get it. But man, that's our job as the church is to be the body. Christ is the head here. We're all the body and we're all needed. And my job is to help train you and equip you to do the works of ministry. So we have to learn here and we have to grow so we can go out and shine a light and teach truth because it's so important. See, part of us is our family. Part of us are our kids and our work sometimes. And see, we, part, we put those things ahead of God. And again, it's a struggling thing for us because we start getting a little bit of, of money and man, it feels good. And now we got to work harder and harder. We start getting more and we work harder. Now we forget it. And now, man, my company makes me work on Sundays and I can't go to church. And man, my kids got sports on Sundays and I'm going to do whatever they need to because they're so important to me. And see, we start making little shifts and those things become idols without us even knowing it. And we get stuck. We have to come and be able to learn truth. And I always tell people, don't take my word for it. Take his. We read out of the Bible because it means that much. And everything he says, we try to live. And we're going to struggle, but we try. And if we're not willing to transform and learn what he did, we're going to struggle and these chains are going to get built up and it gets harder and harder. Because again, if we're putting family, friends, um, jobs, all this stuff ahead of God, it gets very, very heavy and weights us down. See, when we start making idols from everything else, Jesus becomes the co-pilot. See, he becomes second chair. We're the co-pilot. 
we are in second chair. If we truly want to know Jesus and grow and learn to be like him. Don't have pride in your heart to where you need to be number one. Let it go. That's what Jesus did. I love it that he led by example, even in the hard times. See, we're fortunate. We don't have to get beat till we can't be recognized. He did that for us. Just think about it. I don't like getting stung by a bee. He got beat so badly, and he said to the father, if you can take this, but not my will be done. That's who I want to follow. Who in this world has done anything that you can follow that has done anything for us really like that? So, but, but I want to hold on to this so bad. I'm sure Jesus didn't want to go through that, but he did. See, when we go through things, God tells us, you're going to have trials and tribulations, but take heart. See, I'm not going to take them away. I'm going to help you. And everything you do for me, even though it's hard, I will use for the good of those who are called according to my purpose. That's what we get in Romans 8.28. See, he won't just do it for the good. You have to be doing things for his purpose, not your own. So we can't make idols. We have to put God first. Take a look at this video. When it says in the Old Testament, worship no other gods than me, the implication is that we are a species that worships, and if you do not access the divine, you will worship the mundial, you will worship the profane, you will worship your own identity, you will worship your belongings, you will worship the template laid before you by a culture that wants you, no, wants you, but gets you distracted. How good? Well, that's Russell Brand, though. He's bad. See, anyone can be reached by God. See, he had a transformation. And how profound. See, when we idolize everything else and what this world says, we're worshiping creatures. Why? We're created in God's image. Everyone. If you believe Jesus or not, you're still created in God's image. You just don't let that veil go and you won't accept it, and that's real. It's a broad road to hell. It's a narrow road because of us, again, we have to say we're willing to die to self and learn and keep growing and walking it out. See, let's look at Jesus because he is the perfect example. See, he had this down, and he wanted to show us See, he treated people with love and truth. He never accepted sin, never. And I know we talk about this because it's real for us to understand, but my friend lives this way, and I just want to accept him. Jesus never did that. See, our job as Christians, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, man, we're so glad you're here. Come to him. Let's talk Come see me. Come see Kaylee, my wife, Dee, Trace. We're all here during the week. Come see us, and we'll pray with you and talk it out and go through the steps. See, no one is too bad. Anyone, when they surrender and say, hey, Jesus, I need you, he's right there because he came for those who know they need a Savior. They came for ones that know they're sinners. He didn't come for the ones that think they're doing things right. That's why we keep shining lights. We keep shining lights and teaching truth because hopefully and we're praying that they will let go of themselves. We are not called to follow our feelings. We're called to follow Jesus. But Jesus sat with them and he drank with them and he went for a purpose. He went to teach them to sin no more. Let's look at some stories. See the woman at the well, divorced multiple times. I can relate to her. See, I've been divorced, and God still used me. See, that's my past. After Christ, 
He says, just accept me and let me lead now and I can do amazing things through you. Don't get stuck on what you've done. So he shares with her and uses her to go share with her whole town. And he encouraged her, listen, if you come to me, I'll give you water that you will not thirst no more. He didn't accept and approve the way she lived. He was challenging her to live differently and see what he could do. Look at that, the woman caught in adultery. He shared love for her by telling her, I don't condemn you either, but you need to go sin no more. He didn't say, keep sleeping around, you like it. But Jesus was with the sinners, teaching them truth and love. See, it can't be he's love only or he's truth only. It's combined truth and love. If you don't give the truth out, do you really love them? If you let someone die in their sin and be separated from God forever, did you love them? But they're my friends, or they're my kids, or they're family. It's okay. You can still love them and not accept them in what they do and care of them and show them truth. See, a man, a man possessed and living in the grave and he's breaking chains and, and running around naked and, and freaking out people. Jesus cast out the demons and he told them to go share what God has done. And he became sane and it freaked people out and he was different. He wanted to go with Jesus. And Jesus says, no, stay here and tell people what God did. See, that's our testimony. See, we share with God's done because God has changed all of us. If there's a perfect person, please come up and finish my message. See, we all have something. And if we're believers in here, we all have been changed from something. And no one has been changed or had something too bad where God said, well, I can't change that one. He loved us in our sin and gave us a Savior and a Lord to help us see out of that sin. See, the man, Jesus healed at the bubbling pools. See, he tells him, you are well now. You hadn't walked in years. Now you are well. He says, don't sin anymore or you will be worse. I hope we're getting this because Christianity is such a cool word to say, but it's a hard word to do. That's why it's a narrow road. It's a narrow road because it's hard, God said. Are you willing to work that little bit of hardness to be a light for truth. See, I want to prove God, not wrong, but I want it to be a bigger road to heaven because I want us as a church to be the church, to get out there and stand firm to it and love people and really care for people. And sometimes that means getting rid of people that are a problem in your life. Look at this next one. I wanted to dive in a little more and read some scripture on it. It's a blind man that Jesus brought out of town first. See, he healed seven to eight, nine blind people maybe in the story. And every single time he healed them where they were. Look at this one. When they arrived in Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to Jesus and they begged him to touch the man and heal him. Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. Then spitting on the man's eyes, this was pre-COVID, <laughs> spitting on the man's eyes, he laid his hands on him and asked, can you see anything now? The man looked around, yes, he said, I see people, but I, I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. Then Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes again, and his eyes were opened. His sight was completely restored, and he could see everything clearly. Jesus sent him away, saying, don't go back into the village on your way home. See, he moved him from where his problems were. He was not born blind. He knew what things were, and he could see and went blind. 
And so where he was, was tripping him up probably. See, he had idols there and things were keeping him stuck. So Jesus moves him out of that and then tells him to go, not go back to that. It's okay. You don't have to befriend everyone. You don't have to convert anyone. You don't have to be anything to anyone but a caring, loving person that will help shine truth and love. That is so important. Sometimes we have to break that chain and get away so we don't keep going back in. See, again, we don't want to be lukewarm where we're good. Then when these certain friends come in, man, we dip right back into us. Well, then we're good. And then something happens, we dip right back into us. No idols before him. We need to stay clear of the things that get us caught up sometimes. We are not to tempt God with our belief. See, we're not supposed to say we believe in Jesus. Great, the demons believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. Why does your life look exactly the same? Well, I'm trying to reach people. Doesn't sound right, does it? See, even when we don't understand something, we open this up and we ask and we read it and we go, whoa, I'm not sure. See, this is right. We're wrong. And we have to remember that. Jesus has shown us the way. We fail when we keep returning to the place of our sin or the things that make us struggle or the idols we put in place throughout our life and we sin by keep going there. And it shows that we're not truly understanding what John talks about, that belief and that acceptance to be different. See, our job is not to change anyone. Our job is to water and plant seeds and God will make it grow but God just won't make it grow just because he wants us to choose him. That's free will. That's why Jesus is clear. If you love anyone more than God, your mother, your father, your husband, wife, your kids, or yourself, you're not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. God is it. And he sent Jesus so we could have a way home to him by following him the best we can. And he knows we're going to mess up, so he gave us the Holy Spirit in us that, again, will not make us do right. We have to understand that. We can walk here, and we can go, oh, look at that. I like that. And the Holy Spirit's not going to tug us back. He's going to let us do but he's in there. So when we read and we pray and we hear truth, we know truth. And now we're working with the spirit and the spirit in us is stronger than the spirit in the world and we choose what's right even when it's hard. See, why is it important that we show love to people by teaching the truth? Because if we don't teach truth, we don't really love. Oh, pastors, that's crazy. I love people that don't know the truth. I love them, you do. But again, until you dive into God's love, God's love is so great that he sent his son to die. See, he wants us to go home. God's love is way up higher than our love. See, Jesus loved these people enough to tell them to stop doing what they were doing. It's not picking fights. It's not arguing. It's not having to be right. It's surrendering but sharing truth. It's knowing this well enough so you don't speak, he does. And when they're mad at you, you walk away, wipe the dust off, and wait till another opportunity or wait for someone else and pray for someone else to come because it's going to happen. They're going to hate you. If your friend gets so mad at you for you teaching them truth and loving them, that's what God said. Jesus said, they hated me. They're going to hate you if you follow me. You're not of this world anymore. You're of heaven. Now live like it. That's hard. That's hard. That's why we have a spirit in us that can help us. 
and will guide us. And we have this to open. And I'm telling you right now, don't read it just to read it. Well, pastor said read. I checked off that box today. I don't know what I said, but I read it. See, read it for transformation, not information. If you don't apply knowledge, it just fills you up. And what happens? You become prideful and arrogant. You know who it is. I know that. When you apply the knowledge you get, it flows through you and you shine a light and you're different and you make a difference in someone's lives. I did not accept Jesus for 37 years. I lived for me. I knew God. I was raised Catholic, went to church every once in a while. When I was 18 and my parents said, go to church. They're not driving me anymore. I said, okay, and I never went. I went and got a bulletin and went to eat. See, it wasn't important to me. Then I lived my life for me. And then I had an awakening. And you can hear my story sometime later fully, but I was a teacher and I kicked out the Fellowship of Christian Athletes out of the gym. They wanted to use the gym and I'm like, you can't use the gym, it's hot and I am a teacher at a public school, so get out. And I got the assistant principal to get them out. I accepted Christ six months later and the next year I led FCA and they always had the gym. God will do anything when you surrender you and move and start thinking of who needs to be one and who needs to be in the passenger seat going, man, that was cool. Help me with that. All right. See, transformation is the only way to understand love. If we fight our physical and mental desires to be right and we get angry when truth is spoken, we are lost in our feelings. And we don't understand we can't do this life without a Lord and Savior. Look what Lord means. Someone or something having power, authority, or influence, a master or ruler. See, Jesus is our Lord. He has power. He has authority everywhere. Heaven and earth was given to him. See, I want that because I don't have it. I need that. And then it's, uh, we have to understand our Lord set it up. So we're successful because of his power, not ours. See, when we get that, we step back and we use him. And we go, okay, I don't understand all this stuff, but I'm learning. I'm going to step in with you and I'm going to do it. See, then we get savior. And what that means, it's one who delivers from trouble, sin, or judgment. See, he's our Lord and Savior because he covered our sins with his blood. He shed it for us so we can live for him and it's covered, our past is covered, our garbage is covered. We can repent and we confess, Jesus, you're Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins that I do and I, I start living it out and I get baptized and I start doing the things Jesus did. How cool is that? See, he came when we weren't worthy and died for us so we could be worthy and free from the ruler of this world who is Satan. Jesus says it. Here comes the ruler of this world. He's got no power over me. But see, I'm going to let it go and happen because I want you to want me so bad. But you're going to have temptations. You're going to have flesh. You're going to have these feelings. You're going to have lustful thoughts. You're going to have greedy thoughts. You're going to have prideful thoughts. Let them go and let go and come to me, and you will have total joy and peace. See, the gifts of the Spirit don't show us that we have the Holy Spirit in us. The fruit of the Spirit that we're giving out show us that he's in us. 
See, when we start living with joy and love and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control, now we start seeing a spirit moving in us. And now we're opened up to the gifts that he has. And we can prophesied. Some can speak in other languages they need to speak to in that prayer language of tongues, and they have healings. See, all it comes together now when we're living for him, not for us. He is Lord and Savior. When we believe that, he makes us complete in this life. See, that's on earth as it is in heaven. Ask yourself these questions. You don't have to answer them out loud. But ask yourself to yourself. I talk to myself all the time. How is this world going with all the hate, crime, and love and acceptance of sin? See, if you're honest, it's not going good. See, we want to accept sin. We want to celebrate sin. We want to push sin. And the world is just in one big pile of hate. How's it going? Two, if you believe in Jesus, why do you think his words don't matter? What are you talking about? Because if you truly believed it, you would do what he said. And you would grow. And you wouldn't just accept sin. You would teach people to live truth. Even when they're mad at you, you would stand up because God is right. See, if his word mattered to you, you would live his word, not the world's word. Look at Hebrews 10, 26, and 27. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, Okay, if you deliberately keep on sinning, now we're all going to fall short. But when we go, no, I want this sin, it feels right. I know God said no, but I love it. And if we deliberately keep on sinning after knowing and having knowledge of the truth, there's no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There is only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. See, if you're not for him, surrender to him, repenting because we're sinners, we're his enemy. He still loves us. See, if we choose, he doesn't send us to hell. If we choose to live our life and go to hell, he still loves you. But see, he can no longer try because you've already passed. So every day we can shine a light so no one has a chance. That's why he's slow to send Jesus. He goes, I am slow to send Jesus back. I want no one to miss out. I want everyone to have a chance to repent. Why? Because we all need to repent. We have to get that. There's no other sacrifice. When Jesus comes back the next time, It's heaven and hell. That's it. We can't say we believe in Jesus and then not follow the word. Why? Because the word is Jesus. You have to get that. I'm a follower of Jesus, fully devoted, but I don't like Ephesians 5, this, or I don't like Corinthians this. I don't like Romans 1, 24 to 28 or 34 because it talks about things that my friends are. The word became flesh. Are we getting this? Oh, it's just a book put together. Hey, that's what you got to fight with and pray about because to me it is not. We are shown What is sad to God, yet we choose people's desires over God. Why? What do you mean? I'll share. Proverbs 6, 16 and 19 says, In the Old Testament, there are six things that the Lord hates. No seven things he detests. Haughty eyes. 
a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, a person who sows discord in a family. These are things God despises. Hands that kill the innocent. Who's more innocent than a baby in the womb? God hates, even detests abortion. Again, if you've had an abortion, God loves you. He wants you to understand he's there for you. Don't take a beating by thinking you've done too much and God can't love you. He loves you. He wants to embrace you. Don't let your past stop you from going to the future with God. Embrace him. Know the things that he hates and do the things that he loves. Here's in the New Testament, Ephesians 5, 3 and 8. Let there be no sexual immorality. Let there be no sexual immorality. Impurity. See, that means no sexual immorality. That means if you're not married, you don't have sex before you're married. That means that you are a man and you're a woman and you join together. You get married and have kids. See, that also means that you don't do things sexually that are immoral. And he talks about it. That's a man with a man or a woman with a woman. But he goes on. That's what I love. Because it's not just that. See, we have premarital sex, wrong. Same sex, wrong. Now, or greedy. See, we don't want to talk about greedy, but greedy is just as bad. He says, such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories. Foolish talk. Coarse jokes. These are not for you. See, I'm a Christian. I don't join in on coarse jokes anymore. I have a whole list of them. I don't share them and entertain them anymore. See, that's part of it. I want to be new. See, it says, instead, let there be thankfulness to God that you, you can be sure that no immoral, impure, or a greedy person will inherit the kingdom of heaven or Christ or of God. See, for a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. See, it's an awakening. Don't be fooled because they're telling you, no, this is right now. I'll tell you it's right because Target says it's right. If Target says it's right, it's got to be right. See, we start to function and go, whoa, now we have to grab on and say no. See, it says don't get caught up. Don't participate in the things these people do. For once you were full of darkness, all of us, but now you have light from the Lord, so live as people of light. That's God's word. And, and we shouldn't be shocked because as doing this now for almost 19 years and studying the word over and over and over, when people would say, well, they don't talk about sexual morality a lot and they don't talk about this a lot. He talks about this stuff in Romans. Paul does. In Galatians, we read it two weeks ago. In Ephesians, in Colossians, in Corinthians. Why? See, people were living that way. Why is it important to talk to now? People are living that way. The state of Arizona just opened up that guys can play against girls. After stopping it, now they're reopening it. Now we have school districts. School districts don't get caught up in that. The Peoria district has released open bathrooms. 
guys and girls can go wherever they want. Do you not see that could be weird? Do I? I don't have a daughter. Could you imagine your daughter's five in kindergarten and all these boys are going in there with them and then they get older and, and they're still going in there? Do you see that's the world, that's Satan. All he needs is a little bit of yeast and it goes in there and it starts causing this and now we fight the habit. Don't participate in that. Live as people of the light. It's okay as a parent to say, I do not want my daughter in a bathroom with a guy or in a locker room with a guy. If you don't say anything, again, <laughs> do you love them? I, I know it's hard to hear truth because it's so crazy in this world. But man, keep learning and keep seeking and he will give you it and he will comfort you and he will give you the ability to say what you need to say and share what you need to say, share. So your kids are aware. No, it doesn't happen. My son's 14 and he's here, so I'm gonna talk about him. He's here, so it's not behind his back. He went to the Scottsdale School District last year. He's coming back to Fountain Hills because I'm tired of driving down there. But last year, he was sad in class, and the teacher came up to him and said, oh, Grayson, what's wrong? Oh, I'm sad. I'm going through, my, my brother's going through something. I'm just, oh, here, have these crystals. This crystal's for joy, and this crystal's for this, and if you hold these crystals, you'll be okay. And thank God, he listens to me, not about cleaning his room, not about doing chores. <laughs> but this stuff, he said, no, thank you. I don't need crystals. She goes, no, you need these. Take them. He says, I don't need crystals. She put them on his desk, on his book, and he swatted them off. <laughs> B, but some kids will not know because the parents don't care what they're going on, and they'll just go, okay. See how easy it is to let a little. The teacher wasn't mean. I didn't turn her in. I prayed for her. And we told Grace, and next time she'd say, hey, you know what? I have Jesus. You should get to know him. That's it. But be aware. We have to be aware of our surroundings so we know I hate walking in the desert in this, when it starts getting hot again because there's snakes. I haven't seen one yet, but I know. I watch and I look and I watch. I'm aware. When we're not aware, that's when we get tripped up. Again, why do we say love God if we want to fight his truth? Look what Jesus says in John 14, 15. If you love me, obey my commandments. He didn't say if you love me, do whatever feels good to you. We have to take our Christianity serious. We have to really embrace it. It's the only way to have joy in this crazy world. Because I don't lose sleep. I'm going to live my life with joy and happiness and patience. And I'm going to try my best and I'm going to fail sometimes. I'm going to have to repent. But I'm not letting this world squash me down. When things change, I'm just going to keep changing and showing his light not changing what I believe. See, the title of this message is Break the Chain of Idolatry. When we follow Christ, when do we follow him? Always. Always. Even when we have to tell our kids something hard. We have to share something hard to a family member. We have to share something hard to a friend. We always follow Christ. There's no exceptions to our decisions to follow Christ. We're all in. See, we're either, either growing in choosing him or choosing the world and dying. See, we all have a choice. We have a choice to live for eternity or we have a choice to die in this world and to have separation from God in hell. We're still going to live for eternity, but in hell. 
It'll always be July 20th, 120. Or July 23rd. See, it'll be constant separation, misery, agony. See, freedom, break every chain. The breaking of these different chains will free us from this world. That's why we do it. See, we talked about breaking the chain of culture. Be aware. Hate, be aware. Addictions, last week we talked about idolatry. Next week we're bringing it home. We're new creations. Let's live and celebrate. We are new. I'm no longer Keith, Javier, who I was. I'm new in Christ. I'm still Italian, luckily. Whew. And we will have lasagna later. But I'm no longer the Keith of this world. And none of us have to be. Let's pray. Dear God, we love you. We ask you to lift us up and help us be unwavering in our faith, to live your truth, to not get caught up in the craziness of this world and to really shine your light. Help us to always grow. Help us to to reach people that feel lost and hurt and are struggling and don't understand truth. And help us, all of us, be the church to plant those seeds. Where I might not hit, somebody else will. So if we keep doing it and we keep doing it your way, it's going to reach some money. I know it. Keep us strong. Keep us focused. Keep us free. In Jesus' name we pray.